Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 13.46, okay? It says block A and block and B each have a mass M. Determine the largest horizontal force B which can be applied to B so that A will not move relative to B. All surfaces are smooth. Okay, so what we're given in here is that we got these two triangular shaped blocks A and B and we're applying a force P in our block B and what we want is that our block A and our block B basically they don't separate meaning that the acceleration relative from A to B is zero and its velocity as well okay so since we want to have a relative velocity or acceleration um, which is equal to zero what we that means is that our acceleration of A has to be equal to our acceleration on B, okay? Therefore, we're going to call this acceleration just our acceleration, and we know that this works for A and B. We're also told that the mass of A is equal to the mass of B, and is going to be equal to our mass M, okay? So, we're going to start this problem by, guess what? Doing some free body diagram. So, we're going to do the free body diagram of my block A and as we know this block A looks like a triangular shape just like this and what forces do we have in our block A? Well in our block A we have the weight of the block so going downwards so we have the mass times the acceleration G my gravitational acceleration and we also have the normal force normal of A, that it's at an angle with respect to the y-axis of theta, okay? So, this is these are the only two forces that we have, therefore, we're going to do a summatory of forces. We're going to start with our forces in the y direction, assuming that going up is positive. This should be equal to mass times acceleration, but our acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero. So what will we have? Well, we have in the y direction, we have positive and a, the y component, meaning the cosine of theta minus n times g. And this should be equal to zero. Okay, so we're done with the summatory of forces in the y direction. Let's go and plug our summatory of forces in the x direction and we're going to assume that going to the left is positive and we're going to assume that going to the left is positive because our force n is going to the left and also the acceleration that this block is experiment is having is going to be towards the left side okay and the reason for that is that we have this force p that's trying to push these two blocks from right to left all right, so we're going to assume that. Therefore, we're going to have that our mass times our acceleration in the x direction is uh, equal to a summatory of force. So what forces do we have in the x direction? Well, we only have our x component of my Na force. So therefore, we're going to have Na multiplied by, in this case, the sine of theta should be equal to my mass times my acceleration in the x direction, which is my acceleration, okay? So, now that we have this, what we're going to do is that we're going to solve for my acceleration in of A, so we have that my acceleration is equal to Na times sine of theta divided by our mass n. But we also have Na in our equation that we found for y. So let's go ahead and solve for Na in our summatory of y equation. We got Na is going to be equal to n times g divided by the cosine of theta. Now we're going to replace this Na in our bottom equation. And what will we have? Well, we'll have that this is equal to, so Na is, a, is m times g divided by my cosine of theta, multiplied by my sine of theta, and all this divided by m. 
So what can we do? Well, we cancel first our M's if we start simplifying. And if we pay attention, sine over cosine will give me a tangent of theta. Therefore, my acceleration, okay, let me go on for the black. And the acceleration is going to be equal to my g times my tangent of theta. Okay, so now we have our acceleration. We go ahead and let's do our free body diagram for my block B. So we got my free body diagram at my block B. And what do we have? So let me come here and borrow our figure. So that way we make our free body diagram in terms of our figure. And our block B looks like a triangular shape in this direction. And what forces do I have? Well, first, the force that is given by the graph, we have our force P. So we have our force P. Then we have the mass or the weight of this block that I'm going to put it here and G. We also have the normal force that I'm going to call N B going up. And last, we have the normal force, but of block A. So the normal force of my block A. Since my normal force in A is in this direction, we have to have our normal force in the opposite direction to which in my block at B in order for everything to be in equilibrium. Now, uh, that's uh, my normal force of A has an inclination angle that is theta okay so if we apply the summatorial forces in the x direction I'm gonna keep assuming that going to the left is positive in this problem this should be equal to my mass times my acceleration what forces do we have in the x direction well we have P going to the left therefore we have positive P then we have negative the X component of NA, which is NA sine of theta, should be equal to my mass times my acceleration. But my acceleration is G times my tangent of theta. Okay, so now let's recall that we also have the equation for NA. So I'm going to go up here and we have the equation for my normal force of A, which is mg divided by cosine of theta. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We got minus and then we have m times g divided by cosine of theta multiplied by my sine of theta has to be equal to m times g tangent of theta and here we go again uh, we have sine of theta divided by cosine of theta this will give me a tangent of theta so and if we solve for p we will have that m times g tangent of theta and we're moving this entire term to the right side even we will have plus m times g and then we are going to convert our sine of theta divided by cosine of theta as tangent of theta okay and at this point we will realize hey look at this equation we have the same term plus the, the same term so we can combine them together Therefore, our force P is equal to 2 times M times G tangent of theta. Okay, and this should be our final answer for this problem. So if you guys like the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.